Sanders and I are here to talk about a new version of the Postal Banking Act, which we introduced to help solve two major problems at once. First, it will shore up the post office. It will create much needed sustainable source of funding. And second, it will bring banking to the one in four Americans who are currently unbanked or underbanked either because they don't have the funds to access banking or because their community doesn't have a bank at all. Right now, those families are forced to spend $100 billion a year on predatory products like payday lenders, check cashing, and even overdraft fees, all because they cannot afford to access the financial system that many of us take for granted. Sad fact is, it's expensive to be poor in America. <laughs> we can change that with our new Postal Banking Act. The Post, Post Service has 30,000 locations all across the country. In every community, from rural towns to big cities to small cities to suburbs. And each of these locations can serve as a public, nonprofit bank, bringing low-cost banking services to every community in the country including those in the underserved areas. The Postal Banking Act would give families access to small dollar checking and savings accounts, debit cards, low fee ATMs, online banking services, wire transfers, and most importantly, small dollar loans. So they don't have to become victims of predatory lenders if their car breaks down or they need to buy their kid a new pair of shoes or school supplies. The Postal Banking Act would also ensure that postal banking and the U.S. Postal Service at large would remain a public institution and stop the slow, the slow creep towards privatization. And the best thing about postal banking is that we know it already works. Today, the U.S. Postal Service does over $20 billion a year in money orders. And from 1911 to 1966, it offered many of the products that we are proposing, helping millions of low-income families through the Great Depression and two world wars. Okay, I lost the- Postal the, banking was America's thing, most that, successful that. experiment in financial inclusion. At this moment, when families are facing growing economic uncertainty and a widening wealth gap, it could not be more needed. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Senator Sanders so he can talk about why he thinks it's such a good idea too. Well, I do think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. And I wanna thank uh, Kirsten Gillibrand for introducing what is an enormously significant piece of legislation. You know, I know that right now, everybody is worried about the pandemic. We're worried about the economic meltdown. We're worried about climate change. We're about the fight for racial justice. Uh, but in the midst of all of that, we forget the point that Kirsten just made. And that is, it is very expensive to be poor. You all know what that means? What it means that if you're wealthy, you got low interest loans. It means that if you're wealthy, you go to a nice supermarket, you buy food at a reasonable price. But if you are poor, you end up paying higher interest rates than anybody else in America. And that's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It really is an outrage. And what Kirsten is saying is, I've got to deal something. Got to deal with that issue, and we deal with that issue by utilizing the Postal Service, the thirty thousand locations of the Postal Service, to do what large banks are not doing right now. Truth is that over the last many years, large banks have turned their backs on the needs of lower income people. They make money by dealing with large corporations. They make money by dealing with hedge funds. They don't make money like providing a $500 loan. And yet all over this country, in the most horrible way imaginable, and I gotta say, Kirsten, when I think of ugly aspects of American society today, I can't think of anything worse than a struggling family having to pay several hundred percent interest rates on a loan. They're paying off that loan, they're in debt in perpetuity because they cannot afford to pay off the loans, I keep turning them over. Can you imagine in America today, people paying several hundred percent interest rates on a loan because they have a medical bill, their car broke down, 
whatever it may be. How disgusting is that, that we allow that to go on? And the bill that Senator Gillibrand is introducing will go a long way to help low-income people, help working people gain access to low-interest loans, uh, to checking accounts, to a saving account, to all of the things that people uh, desperately need and today are unable uh, to find. So I am a big, big fan of this. Uh, I think this is a significant piece of legislation. I think that as a nation, we do not talk enough about how financial services impact negatively lower income people. And this is a very significant step forward to saying that the United States government will no longer tolerate usury rates, the ripping off in the most horrendous manner of low income people. We're gonna make credit available to people who desperately need it in an affordable way. Uh, and we can do that. And Kirsten is exactly right. The postal service is there in 30,000 locations around America. Some people think this is an urban issue and not a rural issue. Not true. This is a rural issue as well. So I just want to thank Kirsten uh, for this very, very important piece of legislation. And I will do everything I can uh, to see that it gets passed. Thank you, Bernie. So I think we have a bunch of questions that people sent in. Um, and I don't know if, if I'm supposed to read the questions or if, so, if someone else is going to read the questions, but my staff can tell me. Am I reading our questions? Yeah. You're reading the questions. Okay, so the first question, how would postal banking actually work? Would low income people have more access than they do now? Would it give poor people a bank account and would it be available online? Um, so basically it would run like any other bank would run. It would, it would you'd open a, a, an account at your local post office and you could get checking and savings and micro loans and you'd, you'd treat your post office just like any other banking institution. And they do it now. I, I don't know if you have ever gone to the post office to do a money order. I have. So they already know what to do and they already have the authority to do it. They did it for decades. So I think it's pretty easy. It's the same as is. And we would love to have online banking too. And I think that's something that could be developed. So it would be a place to start so people could have access and anybody who wanted access would get access. Let me just add to that if I might, Kristen. I think you Thanks, made yeah. this point. This is not a new idea. The United States did this from, I think, 1911 to the mid-1960s. It's not certainly a new idea internationally because you have countries all over the world who are doing it. So uh, this is an important idea, and uh, uh, let's go forward uh, together on it. Uh, I think it's the next question for me. Is that what we're doing? Next question is for you. I'll read it for you. Okay. I've always heard about postal banking helping inner cities, but what about our rural communities? Look, one of the untold stories that we don't deal with enough in Congress is the decline of rural America. I know you know that from upstate New York. I certainly know it from the most rural areas in the state of Vermont, and it's true all over this country. We're seeing major uh, counties in rural areas depopulate, schools being shut down, downtowns being closed down. Uh, so what we need to do is give support to rural America in a, uh, in a big way. Uh, what this does, uh, is uh, allow uh, financial services to be available all over rural America. Uh, and it also, by making the Postal Service more robust, allowing the Postal Service to offer more services, allow the Postal Service, I think, to increase their revenue by some $9 billion, uh, what this does is allow people in the smallest communities all over America where there is a postal service uh, to be able to take advantage of affordable banking. Uh, and it also reverses uh, the trend uh, where the postal service has wanted to shut down some of these banks. I know a couple of years ago, I worked very hard uh, with some success to prevent the shutting down of thousands of rural banks in America, rural postal services in, in America. And this would help us uh, maintain uh, the post offices in those communities uh, where they are really so important. Perfect. Uh, next question, what exactly is underbanked? I mean, what is an underbanked American? Basically what it is, is people who don't necessarily have a checking or savings account, or maybe just has one account, but doesn't have other services. But if you don't have access to all the services, what happens is if you do have an emergency bill and you don't have $500 in your savings, 
uh, you might go to a payday lender. A payday lender might charge you 100% interest. Like they'll charge you enormous amounts of money for your money. Um, the other type of thing we see is if you want to purchase something and layaway. So that couch might cost $200, but on layaway, it's going to cost you $500 because you're adding a little bit of money every month to your payment. And even worse, just the, the small the chunks of money out of your money, when you get a prepaid debit card that you put your money into so you can use it, every time you go to the ATM, it might be three bucks. It could be as high as five bucks. So you, they're they're stealing your money. <laughs> to, and it's, so it's, just, it's very hard to have money if you don't have a bank account. It's hard to access money if you don't have a bank account. Um, and, and you're prey to the predatory lenders and the payday lenders and all these predatory practices that are available. So we wanna basically put the predatory lenders out of business uh, because they harm Americans. And just as Bernie said and I said, it's very expensive to be poor in America. And this is exactly why, because if you don't have the resources for that bill, the way to get the money, it's gonna charge you a lot of money. It's gonna be very expensive money. It's gonna have a big interest rate. I mean, look at credit card debt. How many families have to balance their budgets on the credit card? Well, the credit card is gonna charge you an 18% interest rate minimum, even more on some cards. And that's outrageous. And so, you know, I've, I've met with seniors who they've put things on the credit cards and then just never quite had enough to pay it off. And they're paying a thousand dollar balance that never leaves. They just pay off the interest and they're literally streaming money into a credit card company. That would change if people had better access to um, banking for those who are unbanked and underbanked. Next question for Bernie. How do we stop U.S. Postal Service from being privatized or take advantage by companies like Amazon and J.P. Morgan? Well, Kirsten's bill, and that's a very important question, is comprehensive. And it is more than aware that there is a massive effort right now uh, by Donald Trump and some of his corporate friends to destroy the Postal Service and to privatize it. And one of the great strengths of the Postal Service and why it is enshrined, by the way, in our Constitution. And I want you all to think about this for a minute. What the Postal Service today is obligated to do is to deliver mail to a trailer park at the end of a dirt road in the same way they do to Wall Street and to wealthy communities. And that's extraordinary. And that's why we have got to maintain the United States Postal Service and fight against any privatization. And what Kirsten's bill has in it is very specific language that prevents the privatization of the Postal Service, uh, which is under threat from companies like Amazon and J.P. Morgan. The Postal Service was privatized, mark my words. If you live in rural America, if you live in a low-income community, nobody cares about you or will care about you because they can't make any money off of you. What they will do is make as much money as they can from wealthy communities, from the corporate world. Who cares about some elderly person who needs prescription drugs living at the end of a dirt road? Trust me, they will not. So Kirsten's bill is very, very clear about understanding that the Postal Service must remain a public entity, public nonprofit entity, and uh, will do everything in the, in the language to prevent privatization. It's a good answer, Bernie. Thank you. Um, next question for either of us: Would the postal bank loan? Would the postal bank loan to people who have no credit? What interest rate would it be? Um, the interest rate is really simple. It's going to be a one-month Treasury rate. So that is the rate that banks uh, lend to many of the world's largest financial institutions. If it's good enough for them, it is good enough for every American. And the the goal of the the effort would be to give this bank account to anybody who wanted it. It's not meant to be exclusive, it's meant to be inclusive. And so we would wanna bring people into the postal banking system, regardless of their income and regardless of what resources they have. That's the whole point. The unbanked and underbanked are typically individuals that the banks don't want. They, don't, they aren't willing to service uh, because they don't have enough money to charge them. So the, this is intended for all Americans and all people in America. Well, let me just add to what Kirsten said. She said something in passing, which is enormously profound and significant. 
If you are a large corporation, you can borrow money at 2%. If you are a low income person, you can borrow money for 100% or 200% from a payday rent lender. And what Kirsten just said, very simple statement. If it's good enough for a large corporation to get that cheap money, why isn't it good enough for a low income person? Why isn't it good enough for a family farmer? Why isn't it good enough for a small business person when you come to think about it, right? And you know what we are touching and nibbling around the edges here is a very profound effort to try to transform our financial service system to protect the needs of the people who need the help the most. Uh, so this is a big deal, guys. Uh, and again, it's in the a huge of chunk of change, Bernie. It's a hundred billion dollars a year that families spend on alternative financial products every year. A hundred right. billion dollars. That's the wealth from the lowest income families in America streaming into these predatory lenders and making massive profits for them. So we want to put them out of business and put that hundred billion dollars and put it right into the working families of America. And this is a very much of a justice issue. And mm -hmm. it's just back to that simple point. Hey, I'm a large corporation. I get 2% interest rates. I'm a struggling working class person. I pay a hundred percent. You tell me how in any way that makes sense or is fair. So those are the issues that this bill uh, begins to tackle in a very profound way. And Kirsten mentioned something else before. You mentioned uh, interest rates on credit cards. Well, you mm -hmm. know, 18% is the low end of that. You yeah. know, you could be a lot higher than that. And this begins to tackle that. If I have to pay off some credit card debt, you know what? I could borrow 500 bucks at 2%, pay off that mm -hmm. debt rather than pay 20% to 25% and so forth. So uh, I hope everybody realizes that in the fight for economic and social justice and racial justice, this concept of bringing about real change to our financial service system, making it work for working people and not just the wealthy and large corporations is of enormous consequence. And Kirsten's mm -hmm. bill is right in the middle of all of that. So I thank her very much uh, for introducing it. Thank you, Bernie. I also think the point you just made, this is one of the anecdotes to institutional racism in financial services. Um, because <clears throat> for a lot of communities, particularly black and brown communities, they are ignored and left behind by the entire financial services industry. It's very hard to get a small business loan if you are a black owned business. It's very hard to get a, a home loan. It's very hard to certainly get a micro loan uh, these families are ignored and disadvantaged uh, and have been so generationally. Um, postal banking is a solution to closing the wealth gap between black and white America. And it is because once you can have a bank account, you get to save all that predatory cash that goes out the door when you need that payday loan or you need to wire money to a family member or any other emergency um, need. You, that wealth goes back into your pocket. It goes back into black families for generations. And it makes all the difference in the world. Once you have that first loan, you can accrue wealth. Once you have that first uh, savings account, you can accrue wealth. This is how we build and change the wealth gap in America today. And I promise you, people are gonna fight us on this. They're not gonna want this to go through. You heard Jamie Dimon look, looking around for whether JP Morgan should be doing this. They're looking to get a piece of the action. This is about the American people. This is about um, restoring something that we used to have that's been lost. We had this for over 50 years. It worked. It was something that was effective uh, and it will restore people's ability to provide for their families, especially post COVID. I mean, this is one of the biggest things I hope a Biden presidency could accomplish with Senator Sanders and I passing this bill in the Senate, because the truth is it's, it begins to help the lowest income people get back on their feet. Right. So I, I just uh, want to just reiterate how very, very important this legislation is. It is for low income people, as Kirsten just said. It's for small businesses. It's for the minority community. It's for rural communities. It's maintaining universal mail service because we're going to add $9 billion 
a year to the revenue base, revenue uh, uh, source of, of the Postal Service. This is a big, big deal. And we hope the American people will stand with us in saying that we've got to put an end uh, to a situation where payday lenders are ripping off people in the most outrageous way imaginable. And we have to make affordable banking available to all. Thank you, Bernie. And thank you for everybody who joined our call. Um, we're very excited about this legislation and so are a number of our colleagues. So this is something that I'm gonna work hard on with Bernie to get it across the finish line um, sooner than later, because we cannot accept this economy as it is. We are gonna build it back better. We're not gonna build it back to the way it was because it so didn't help most people. It was very unfair and it created massive um, uh, wealth gap in this country. Uh, so we want to restore something that's been lost, uh, build up something that works and help more families, particularly those hardworking families who are so often preyed upon uh, to give them the resources that they've earned and give them the ability to get those microloans at the end of the month when they can't pay all their bills or to get that microloan when they have an emergency so they never have to use predatory practices again. Um, and I'm just really grateful, Bernie, for your voice and your vision and your leadership on this issue. It makes all the difference. Well, thank you, Kirsten. You have been the leader on this for many, many years. Uh, let's go forward together and let's pass this. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.